Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this comes from a post on my blog, Lively's Flash Builder Users Group. And so we meet every other week at Panera Bread and just have a great time. It's a small group right now, but we're actually growing. I'm looking forward to the great things that this group is doing already. We've done a major project uh, that just went on to uh, alpha beta testing and did a very successful run. And we've got a bunch of other projects on the way. but. And of course the emphasis of this group is mobile programming and we're looking at Mate here today. Now I want to say I got caught with my pants down the other day. I was actually on the web doing some research in Mate and all my videos kept popping up. I went, oh my lord, I don't want to hear that guy and you never want to hear your own videos. So it's kind of like, you know, just get out of town. I want to hear something from somebody who knows something. And so I just kind of thought, you know what, I better put some videos up. Because there's not a whole lot out there on Mate and Flex4 uh, that are really good examples. So I'll put a few good ones up uh, and we'll just keep going on with this project. But what we have right here is basically a simple menu. So if you've done Cairngorm and Pure MVC like I have, you know, uh, Mate is just a natural, but you want to get a good example. And once you see a good example or a few good examples, it just all totally makes sense. Mate is probably one of the easiest of the MVC architectures to learn. And if you don't know what an MVC architecture is, I have a few links here in the blog post. Why use Mate? That's mine. And it's a great 360 presentation and creating and applying skins by... Uh, so this application code is provided. Now, we haven't provided much code on the blog to this point, but we're starting to do that now. So if you click on the application, it'll come up and play. And it's just a basic navigation. So you can imagine this would be like your splash screen. And then you might, you know, click. Or it might have a self-click once a uh, splash screen plays. And then, uh, or a flex event, for example. And then you're on a login screen. And once you log in, then you have your little menu screen. And you go to screen 4. And there might be something there, go back. Screen 5, there might be something there, and go back. Uh, screen 6, and there might be something there, and go back. Screen 7, and so on. And then just log out, and you're back on the Smash screen. Now, if this is all you want to do, don't use Monte or any type of MVC. This is just too easy. But as your programs grow, you definitely need an MVC so they can actually be modulized and just grow to great proportions. And so you can actually rapidly create courses and whatever type of um, website you're doing. So with that said, you can go ahead and just right click on this, view source, and down here at the bottom just go ahead and download the source. Of course, a Flash Player uh, uh, 11, I'm actually using that now, and you can see it's actually throwing this little message here, so please ignore that. Just click on the source and download that, unzip it, and have a great time. And we're actually going to talk about how the source works right now. So I have Flash Builder open, and one of the things you really want to do with Monte is actually keep the folder names. And the reason I'm saying that is so for maintainability, and when you're creating more prog projects or a junior programmer comes on, he can actually take the project over very rapidly if you keep those project names. And so I have a few here. I just create some folders, and you can actually create any type of reverse syntax that you want. I got org, lively, 3D, mate. And under that, I have an events folder, a maths folder, a model folder, a services folder, a views folder, and a value objects folder. And you can put more, but try to stick with these names just so you can have maintainability at the end and so other people can come and take the project over. That's the whole purpose of standardizing these names. Of course, in this, you'll be events of some type of event. Here, we just have a navigation event. And in that navigation event, you can see we just uh, set a number of labels and tags. And we've talked about Mate before, and so you should recognize this. And I'm using reverse syntax domain, so I basically don't repeat any of them. And pretty much all I'm doing is uh, running an event with the super type and, of course, with the bubbling set to true. Now, how does that work in Mate? Well, let's take a look real quick here. In Mate, you basically have a view, and when you click on that view, you actually bubble up event. And that event bubbles up to the event bus. So, so so in our code here, you see we've actually created a kind of a custom event. And depending on what you clicked on, you're going to bubble up one of these uh, tagged uh, references. And when that bubbles up through the event bus, it's actually going to be caught by an event handler. And that actually is a map that you create in Mate. So let's take a look at the map. So if you open up Maps, there's my map right there. And you can see I have all these event handlers. So I've actually brought in my model manager, my uh, navigation event, and my simple nav uh, view. And I actually have my flex event as well. And so the first event handler, basically what it does, it listens for the application complete, and it uh, transfers to the model manager uh, that my tag name, and then it sends that tag name to selected view. That's how easy it is. And then if I click on the navigation sc screen, I tell myself to go to screen 1, or to screen 2, or screen 3, screen 4, etc. And all that's being captured in the event handlers. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, slides again. So once it's captured in the event handler, then that is actually sends out a message. And that will basically uh, cause something to happen. And in my particular case, what I'm going to be doing is from the event handler is actually loading information into the model manager. Let's take a look at the model manager real quick. Here's my model manager. And basically what I do is basically just load the selected view. 
whatever that number might be. Now where does that come from? Let's go ahead and open up our views for a moment and take a look at that. Now here's my views and in my views I actually have seven views. Now, these are actually MXML components. Of course all that's brought together in the simple nav so that's what we want to take a look at. And in my simple nav I actually set tags and that tag is going to be what screen I'm in and there's actually seven screens zero through six. And if you're used to the um, view stack, you know, whatever I set the selected view to, that view I'll be in. So it's those numbers 0 through 6 when I set to the selected view will change you to that particular view screen. And that's how easy it is. And so many MATE programs are set up just like this. So let's go back. So here's my event map. And it's almost like a switch case. And what it does is actually you click on the event. It bubbles up the event number. And basically that event number comes from the nav event. And it says, hey, let's take a look at this, the property setter. And let's take the property that you've just clicked on and set that in the model manager. Now, in the model manager, it just sets that number. Where does that number come from? It comes from the simple nav. And that number is going to be 0 through 6. But that number just sits in the model manager. It doesn't do anything. It's just being held there. Because we want everything to be loosely coupled. So we need to have a way to send that over back to the view so we can actually change the view in the view stack. So how do we do that? Well the way we do that is that we use an injector. So basically what the injector does, it takes that value from the model and sticks it back into the view. And that's really all there is to it. So if we go back and take a look at our uh, map again, we see we have the injector down here that takes basically the information from the model manager, which will be the selected key, and sends it to the target key in simple nav. So if we click on the simple nav, we see the target key should have the name selected view. And if it does, we're good. There it is. And that is set by binding. And we're all... Now there's a few things I want to point out before we move on. And uh, let's see if we can follow the flow once again. Once again, you see we have our views. And we click on something and it sends out an event to event bus, which goes to our event handlers, which kind of in this case acts like kind of a switch case. It grabs the particular event it sends it to the model manager and then we have a uh, basically an injector that sends it back to the view. Okay, that's good. But you might be asking yourself, well how does the uh, views know about the event bus? So let's go to the main program and take a look at it. So I have Flash Builder open and we're going to actually go to the main uh, default package and click on simple nav. And you can see uh, once everything is set out, you have to basically uh, set your views in your main program. There's our views and then you set the map event itself in the program as well. And notice that the map event is set inside of decoration tags. Now this is something that has changed between Flex 3 and Flex 4. This must go into the decoration tags or get an error. And so by setting them together, they know about each other. And as a result, uh, you can actually run the program. So uh, at that point, uh, let's go through the program again with one more thing said. Each one of these screens, of course, is sent up a view. If I click on one and go to Design View, You can see there's my uh, first screen, my login screen. So each one of these screens is a screen. But you wouldn't want to do a slideshow like this. A slideshow would be done differently. We're going to address that. This is more like changing like states in a program. From like, for example, login screen to the main screen, to like the checkout screen and so forth. So uh, that's pretty much what I have to say on this topic. And we're going to go through the program once again. And then we're going to finish up. Good. So it's a real simple flow. Let's just work with the program one more time and just talk through it as we go. So if you forget the address of the blog, it's www.livelyfbug.wordpress.com. And that's the, my user group. It's so fun to have a user group that you get to teach things to. The whole purpose is to actually qualify people for higher employment in coding. So let's click on the application again. So at this point, I'm at the splash screen. So when I click that screen, too, I generate a bubble event that goes up to the event map. When it goes up the event map, that is, uh, hits the event handlers. It's stored in the model view, and the injector sends it to where? Back to the splash view, and it changes the view state. So there you have it. It's that simple. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. And go ahead and download this example, play around with it, watch the video a few times, and make sure you watch that 360 video as well. It's really great. And I'll see you next time. Next time we're going to actually do authentication, and uh, we'll move on with this application and do some remoting. So thanks for listening. Mike Lively, see you next time. And uh, come to Livelybug if you're ever in Florence, Kentucky, at Panera 9 every other week.